The idea of a smartphone built just for gamers is not a new one. Remember my throwback on the Nokia N-Gage? That was from 2003. Updating that idea for 2017 means blending bold design, like a special screen and loud speakers, with a brand name that's come to be synonymous with PC gaming. I'm Michael Fisher, and this is a Mr. Mobile first look at the Razer phone, brought to you by GameStash. Before we get down to it, does this design feel a little familiar to you? If so, you probably remember the next bit Robin, a quirky smartphone that I reviewed in 2015 for Pocket Now. Well, that family resemblance is more than coincidence. See, Razer acquired Nextbit earlier this year, presumably converting whatever the Robin 2 was going to be into this. But where the Robin was modest and a little cutesy, the Razer phone is decidedly not. It's large, about the size of a Pixel 2 XL or Galaxy Note 8, but with a smaller display. That makes room for a pair of front-firing Dolby Atmos speakers that are truly cacophonous. Razer wouldn't come right out and say they're the loudest phone speakers on the market, but I think they are. For the full review, I'll be putting it into the sound booth here at the studio. Subscribe so you don't miss it. As Razer sees it, that audio edge is one of the phone's three defining features. Another is the display, which is an IGZO LCD from Sharp, whose main claim to fame is 120 Hz refresh rate. That makes for well-oiled animations, crucial for a smooth gaming experience, and the phone is smart enough to dynamically adjust the refresh rate to save energy. As any owner of the new iPad Pro can tell you, once you've tried 120 Hz, it's tough to go back. And this is so close to perfect fluidity that it might even beat out Google's Pixel line for smoothest Android experience. Razer does provide the option to manually adjust it, though, if you're trying to conserve power. Not that you should need to with a 4,000 mAh battery on board. That's 15 to 20% more capacity than most other phones in its class, with the notable exception of Huawei's Mate 10. It's also one of the first with Qualcomm Quick Charge 4 Plus, which should get you from 0 to 50% in 35 minutes. All this battery stuff factors into the third pillar, performance. Yeah, it's a pretty nebulous term, but one that's backed up by pretty serious specs. And with engineers from Razer's laptop team working on it, the company says this phone should have better thermal performance than any other Snapdragon 835 device, which means you should be able to run it harder and longer. All that sounds good, but if you're like me, maybe you were expecting a bit more from Razer's first foray into the smartphone space. I wish this design had a bit more of the flair that the company's keyboards are known for, and I also wasn't expecting some of the compromises I found, like a mere 64 gigs of onboard storage and the omission of the headphone jack. Razer said it couldn't put a headphone jack in, not without shrinking the battery or the speakers, and it does include a dongle in the box with a 24-bit DAC built in. As for the storage thing, Razer argues it doesn't matter, since its hardcore fans know their way around micro SD cards. Eh, okay. Razer also knows its audience well enough to understand that they don't like clunky manufacturer skins. So Razer decided to save everyone a lot of trouble and preload the Prime version of Nova Launcher instead. This is an inspired move that I hope starts a trend and it sure takes some of the sting out of the fact that this phone ships with the older Android Nougat. Razer does promise an Oreo update in the first quarter of 2018 and at least two years of Android updates. Throughout that time, you'll be able to theme it with graphics from certain partners. And yes, it ships with an unlockable bootloader. Razer isn't using this phone to launch a new game catalog or an array of accessories or Sadly, the PC-to-phone game streaming system that so many were hoping for. It's not here. There are some titles that'll be optimized for 120Hz, like Titanfall, Final Fantasy XV, and Arena of Valor. And because Razer sees the industry embracing touchscreens as it goes more mobile, it's not building accessories with physical controls. Speaking of those points, Razer made an important distinction. This isn't a gaming phone, the company says but a phone for gamers. I kind of get it. I mean, this company has passionate fans who might pay a premium for the features it does bring. That premium? $699 unlocked, with pre-orders open now and a targeted availability of November 17th for the US and Europe. 
for launch day pre-orders, look for a limited edition run of devices with the logo in Razer's signature green. No CDMA version here in the States, and no carrier deals to speak of either. Whether the Razer phone will fare any better than previous gamer phones is a question I'll try to answer in the full review. I'll also put that dual camera system to the test, which Razer didn't speak much about in my hands-on session. And lastly, if you're looking for games to run on this hot piece of hardware, subscribe to my sponsor. GameStash is a revolution in Android mobile games. Under five bucks a month gets you chart-topping titles like Badlands, Worms, Cut the Rope, and over 300 more, specially modified to cut out in-app purchases and ads. Try it free for 14 days at the links in the description below. Otherwise, stay tuned for that full review, folks, and be sure to subscribe to The Mr. Mobile if you haven't already. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.